Hi guys, how are you doing? If you're new here, my name is Rodian and today I'm going to be talking to you about the one and a half brick pier. Now, the way we build this pier can be adapted to two brick piers, two and a half brick piers, three brick piers, 50 brick piers if you want. Well, I suppose a 50 brick piers house, isn't it? Anyway, you get what I'm saying. So this uh, this technique will be able to sort of, like I said, one, two, three, four, five brick piers and anywhere up. Okay, so we've got bricks here, we've got muck here. Let's get over and get a few bricks laid. Right, okay guys, a couple things before we get going. One, apologies for the shadows. It might be difficult to see a few things. I'll try and sort it out, but um, uh, that is something that I have to tackle this time of year. And also, I don't know if you can hear it at the moment, but there is a plane going overhead. So if for some reason the audio goes off or it goes out, it's because I'm cutting out that goddamn airplane. So with that being said, let's get on with this. So what we're doing, for those of you who haven't seen my one brick pier video, I'll link it down below. And also, what is a one? <coughs> excuse me. Also, what is a one brick pier? Not a one brick pier. Sorry, a one and a half brick pier. A one and a half brick pier is as such. When you look at it from one end, it's one and a half bricks wide. That's pr pretty much it, really. So all the way around, you got four bricks in that sort of configuration. Now, what we're going to do? is I'm gonna mark off some lines all the way around this. Now, advice to setting out what you need to do, or what I like to do, is rather than using a tape measure and measuring one and a half bricks and marking it, I like to place the bricks first and then mark it so that, so that you know you got it right. Because the main reason I do this is because bricks vary in size I have had bricks that have been as much as 20 millimeters bigger and sometimes smaller. So I like to make sure that you measure it. They could be slightly different. Some of these are uh, two mil bigger. Some of them are bang on the money. Some of them are three mil bigger. So I like to do it this way so that I know that it's not gonna be out. It might only be a couple of mil, but with these piers, I like to make sure that the perps are a good 10 millimeters. They have to be 10 mil. If they're any smaller or any bigger, then they'll be noticeable. And also these piers have a tendency to spread when you fill the middle in. I'll get to the middle in a second. In fact, while we're on the subject, let's talk about the middle. So when you build this up, what I like to do is I like to build it up and leave a gap in the middle and fill it up with concrete afterwards. Now the reason is, there's two reasons why I like to do this. Number one is if I put a half brick in there and muck it in as I go, there is a tendency it could spread, as in as it comes out, it will spread out of, out of plumb. Now this has happened to me once before when I was an apprentice. I built a pier out front of a, someone's front door and it spread. Now it was probably due to me and not paying that much attention and basically not, not doing it correctly that it spread. But ever since then, I've been a bit wary. So I don't put bricks in the middle. I fill them up with concrete afterwards. So like I said, number one reason is for the spread. Number two reason, I'm gonna pause, hold on one second while this plane goes over. Okay, sorry about that plane. Okay, so on to the second reason. If this pier is being used at the end of a garden wall and it is quite high and you wanna hang a gate on it, I again like to fill this with concrete purely because when I build the footing I'd have a bit of rebar coming up through and then that will fill that with concrete and that will make that nice and solid so you can hang stuff on that pier. If you don't have um, any rebar or anything like that coming up through the middle then all of the weight of a gate, depending on how big the gate is, if it's just a pedestrian gate you wouldn't have to worry so much but if it's a gate sort of the width of a car there's a lot more weight pulling down on that end which makes this section here a lot weaker. So if you, you're slamming that gate around a bit, then this, the whole thing could fall over in, in, uh, in theory. So those are the two reasons why I don't, I like to not fill up the center, fill it up with concrete afterwards, like I say, if there's a rebar, and uh, to stop it from spreading through that uh, one time that I did it. And I frankly haven't sort of been able to sleep right after that. <laughs> That's a bit excessive, but you know what I mean. It sort of haunts my dreams, that pier that I built. Uh, I think I might have a photo of it somewhere. If I have got a photo of it, I'll put it up on screen. If not, then uh, many apologies. Right, okay, so from here, this is basically a one brick pier, and on top of them, obviously half bonds, you go up like so, and that's your pier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build probably about three or four courses up, and then I'll put the brick on edge on the top, much like I did on the last video, and that plane can bugger off. So like I said, I will build up three or four courses, then I'll just put the brick on edge on the top because the brick on edge is slightly different on this than it would be on the uh, pier in the previous video. 
grab these off. And what I like to do is I'll, I'll keep these set out like this. In fact, I will measure them to make sure they're all the same. Two, two. Right, that looks good. Oh, Christ, excuse me, I want my framing square. I like to make sure they're square. So if I square these up, and then basically all I do is I'll draw a line around the lot. There we go. Now I can't find my pencil, <coughs> excuse me, so I'm just going to mark it with my trowel. Luckily, that doesn't look terribly square. So what I'll do is I will. Uh, I'll build, obviously, I'm going to build it first course up, and then I'm going to square it off again anyway. But I just like to do that to get a rough idea, so I'm not a million miles away. So what I'll do is uh, it's pretty much exactly the same as building a pier the last time, apart from you don't have to worry about when you put the muck down about furrowing it away from this side because we're not having any on this side so I'll, I'll just start building and if I feel that there's anything that I've missed then I will obviously let you guys know <clears throat> so we'll start trying to pick a brick that's not dirty so we'll start with this one here Get Boaty McBoat face on there. <clears throat> I'll take that for gauge. That's perfectly 75 millimeters. So I'll come around this way so that you can see the inside as I build it and then you see the outside on this side. So I like to pick a brick that's nice and clean preferably, but that's on the back so that, that'll be fine. Obviously if it was for a customer I wouldn't put a mucky brick on the outside, I'm only doing it because you can't see it and this is only an example. So when I butter the bricks, for I, I don't like buttering bricks that are already down, I'd much prefer to butter the ones that I'm going to put down, so make sure that's nice and full. And then, much the same with a lot of other uh, aspects of bricklaying, I like to put my hand on this side so when I push this brick in, up, down and in, it doesn't move. There's a chance it probably will move, but we're going to sort that out in a moment. Again, grab the brick. Oh, that's a nice clean one. Makes a change. We'll butter that up. It's a little bit awkward doing it this way, just because you can't butter the other side up perfectly, but it works. Plonk that one in. couple of those in so from there I will grab my level good old fill and plumb them over uh, level them over and that's that and through there cool that one was quite high that one yeah that level a good old wallop turns out there was uh, a bit too much muck under there so we'll pull all that muck out, clean her up. Now, as you can most probably tell, these look well out of square, which is exactly why we're going to square them up in a second. Just want to make sure that it's all level. That one's probably come up a fraction. There we go. Oh, that looks good. Now, last brick in here. 
and that looks well out of square but don't fret that will all be sorted out momentarily <clears throat> right nice brick now it's got the corner off it so we'll go in that way now this one you can butter one end up like you would do normally <clears throat> and the other end like I've shown you so that's one side and then the other side like so and then plonk them in and then uh, level them up they are all uh, moving a little bit but that is to be expected How's that for level? So that's not that bad. That's a little bit, a little bit low. It's better. Perfect. Right now, from here, what I'm going to do is I will. Oh, blimey, I've thrown my tape all over the place. Right, from here what I'll do is I'll measure this front because this front looks the nicest. That's bang on 320 mil. So what I'll do is I'm going to move these around to make sure they're all 320 mil. 320. What's this? That's uh, quite a bit bigger. So we'll pull that one in. Uh, 320. And I'll go this way there to, that's cool, that's quite a big bit out that one. That's moved a fair old lump, so you, like so. And from there, I'm going to grab my framing square again. And now we're going to square it all up nicely. Now what you do, you square that over like that. I like to do opposite sides as I go. No, that's square. Now, a good way to check is do corner to corner. So that corner to corner is 450, and that corner to corner is 450. Perfect. That's a good way to check that you're square. So that is square. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about checking square anymore because the bottom ones are square, and everything we go up from now is just going to be using levels. We're just going to plumb up the sides, and that, that's basically how we're going to go from here. Right, okay, so here we go, we've got the first course all sorted, it's all nice and square, as we've seen, checked both diagonals are the same uh, same measurement, 10mm uh, perps, it's all perfectly square, nice and looking good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up three more courses, I'll probably time lapse it, and then I will talk to you about the plumbing points and ranging points. Uh, purely, I'm going to time lapse it purely because this video will be an hour long otherwise. So I'll come up to four courses, and then I'll, once I've spoken to you about all the plumbing points, then we'll put the brick on edge on the top, and uh, we'll have we'll have a nice uh, nice little one and a half brick pier. Okay, so uh, I'll crack on with this, and uh, I'll see you in a second. Right, okay, I'll come back to you while I show you these last couple of bricks. I've levelled up gauged up, plumbed up, ranged up, all these two here. Now, when you're building these, a good trick is once you have built, uh, plumbed up these two corners here, to save having to plumb in the middle to get this up, it's almost as if you're building a corner. You can range level on the top of the this brick and then on the top of the brick of the course below, level it over because you know this is plumb. You've already done that. You've already done the work on there, in fact. Yeah, that was plumb. You've already done the work on it to plumb that up, so you can straight off down there and get that in there without having to plumb up that middle. It's just a, a little bit of speed, much the same as doing a little corner. Because essentially all this is, it's going to sound really dumb, is four corners, but that's essentially what it is. I'll just get these last two in, and then we'll uh, work on the top.
these bricks are still getting real wet. I'll tell you what, down in the comments, has anyone got an idea? Can anyone recommend some good bricks that I can use? I'll show you in a second. This this water, this is getting ridiculous now. It's stopping me from um, building how I want to be building. I'll give you a close-up on screen now of this water. Brick Lane with Steve and Alex, I know you've come up with a good idea and say put Feb in it in the muck, which is exactly what I did. I did put a little bit of Feb in this uh, lime mortar. It didn't need it and uh, unfortunately it hasn't really done the trick. It's made it easier, <laughs> nicer to work with, like real nice, like buttery, but that water is still there. Now I don't know if it's down to the fact that I leave my muck on this spot board knocked up and all I do is I cover it with a bit of tarpaulin so it doesn't get wet. It keeps it nice and dry, but like this morning it was uh, it was a little bit frozen, but that might have something to do with it. Obviously as, as it dries out, as the ice melts in that muck, the water could be coming through. Perhaps that is it. But I have had it with fresh muck, like that doesn't have any ice in it. So any ideas, anyone, please do let me know down in the comments. I don't really want to use engineering bricks because I don't like how they look. I want something a bit nice. Maybe maybe some flittings or something along those lines. A, uh, a sand face or something like that. Something's probably a bit less porous than these bricks. I forget what these ones are called. If I can remember what they're called, I'll put it up on the screen. But they're, they're a nice brick, but cool, that isn't half leaking. I'm not going to touch that, I'll get that on camera. So yeah, down in the comments, let me know any, any bricks. I don't, like I said, I don't really want to use engineering bricks because I don't like how they look. They're a bit too clinical for my taste. So something with a little bit of character to it, perhaps. Uh, I do have the bricks that I built the house out of. The, uh, the imperial, the, the imitation stocks. I might use those because I know they really do suck the water out of it. So that might be, be a good shout. And then I can just point it up in a darker muck afterwards. But yeah, let me know. It'd be uh, interesting to hear what you guys think. Right, and there we go, that's one pier done. Well, let's get a close up of this muck. I don't know if you can see terribly well on that, but there is the water literally bubbles up out of these bricks. And as you can see on this brick specifically, it's just the water's just dribbling out of it. And there's that bubble right there. Hopefully you can see that on camera. And um, yeah, like I say, ideas down in the comments, please. What bricks can I use? Anything to sort this out? Because it, frankly, it's doing my Swede in. Right, so now we've got these four courses all built up. You're gonna have to excuse the muck that is just flowing out of these joints. I'm gonna have to do something about this. I'm definitely gonna have to change these bricks. Anyway, I digress. So as you can see, I've put just a little bit of slate over this hole um, for the purpose of this video. I'm not gonna fill it up. I'm just going to plop a little bit of slate over the top. I wouldn't advise doing this in a real world situation. I wouldn't do this in a real world situation because I don't think you'd have a strong enough pier. Right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the brick on edge. Now, as I said before in the previous video, three brick on edge fit nicely over one brick. However, now that we have that extra half a brick, that doesn't work. You've got two choices. You can either one, put four, course, uh, four brick on edge through here and have wider perps, or put five on and you'd have to cut each brick down. Now, I think putting five on looks nicer, or you can also do one other thing. You could also have an oversailing course and then put four bricks on tightly on top and that looks nice. However, in this case, I'm just gonna put four bricks on and have slightly bigger joints for the, for the purpose of this video. I will put on screen to, um, uh, images of the the cut bricks and or the oversailing bricks if I can't find any about the cut bricks then it will just be the oversailing bricks so with that being said before this plane goes overhead I'm going to get some muck on here and I will start putting the bricks on right so now we've got the muck on the top what we're going to do 
is we're going to start laying them through. I'm going to lay them from the back to the front because unlike the other video, with this one, all the corners are plumb. So, much similar to the previous video, fill up them frogs straight away. And then that first one can go straight on if I put the muck on that corner. I'm not going to level them over just yet. I'm just going to tap them on because I know that the, that slate in there is going to be a bit high. So I will actually, I probably will level it over a little bit. I have a feeling that that slate might come and bite me in the bum hole in a minute purely because it's a bit higher than I'd like. So from here, you're going to have to cut a brick and put it on the end. So I'll get my tape measure and I'll measure that before I cut it and then I'll probably just be a 100mm cut. So then I'll just cut four. Right, so with these cut, just a half back, nicely cut at 100mm, that should fit on there perfectly. You want to again fill the perp up and then you want to butter the cut side up because that's the side that is going to be the joint against that brick on edge that you just put in. So slide that in like so, much the same as if you were laying a brick normally, but just it's on its edge, obviously. Can be a little bit fiddly the, uh, the first time you do it, but do it a few times and it becomes quite easy. Okay, so once you've done that, it's essentially just rinse and repeat. I was about to throw that muck on the top there. I don't want to be doing that. That will spoil that. So once, when you move along, you want to alternate. So I'd have the cut on that side, etc., etc., and follow from there. Now, because you're having those four, four, um, four bricks instead of three. What am I blinding on about? So the perps are going to be bigger. So what I'd suggest is that you mark equal amounts on the muck before you do it. However, I am going to risk it and I'm just going to plonk them in and hope I've got bigger perps. Just put a bit more muck on there than I would do normally and hopefully that'll work. And you just uh, sort of rinse and repeat and go from there. So I will go through and do this. I will most probably time lapse this, time -lapse this for you guys and uh, I'll come back to you when it's done. Because that is pretty much uh, all there is to say about that. Practice makes perfect, I suppose. I'll tell you what, before I carry on, one thing I forgot to say is plumb that up before you go. I know I said a moment ago I wasn't going to, but to get it right, it's always best to. Okay guys, and here we go, one finished off pier. Now, before we go into too much detail, there's a few things. First off, the rest of the video that you've just seen, I filmed this morning, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning. Now it's about half past three, and this muck is just getting wetter and wetter. So what I've done is I've pointed it up the best I can, because the rest of the week it's gonna be raining. And also the top, I'm gonna to bring you in and show you in a minute, but the perps were so big that I ended up doing a completely different pointing. I did bird's beak pointing. And the reason I've done this is because the perps are just so big. Let me just quickly show you. Okay, there's the top of it. Bird's beak pointing. I've had to clean the bricks off because they're so, the muck is just so wet. 
but if I put a tape measure up against these perps just to show you that that you're looking at 20 millimeters there now that's double the size you're supposed to have them and this is because three bricks fit onto one brick on a brick on edge and one it just doesn't happen so the best way to do this is don't do four do five and cut them all or I'm going to put on the screen now an image of what you could do as well and uh, if you would like me to do a walkthrough of these then please do let me know down in the comments and I'm more than happy to do a little video about that so that's not a problem so the tops are bird's beak again it's it's so wet it's so difficult to get this looking nice and the bricks were so smudged I've had to go around and just clean them all off so that it looks quite nice for the video so that is what we've done on the top and while we're at it I'm going to quickly just run through the plumbing points because I don't think I spoke about them earlier so we'll just take these two corners for example every every corner you come up to you come 50 mil in from one side 50 mil in from the other side and those are the plumbing points along every point now as I did show you earlier before you put in this brick along here say you've just laid this one you can range it through now that will um, negate the fact that you're going to have to plumb in the middle so it's 50 mil in from either end and you're looking good for the plumbing points for that <clears throat> and obviously across the top you range it through for those as well plumb up here and then range through from the top from there as well so those are the plumbing points for that like I said I'm I'm not terribly happy with how this has turned out purely because I need to go back to the drawing board with these bricks and this mortar because I can't keep making videos like this I'll keep blaming the mortar I'll keep blaming this that and the other the practice is right <clears throat> how I'm showing you but I'm just not very happy with how it's turning out so what I'm going to be doing in the new year I'm going to be using completely different bricks and I'm going to try and work out how how the hell to do this because I can't show you how to build stuff if, if it's just coming up like this this should be a series in how to lay wet bricks and point up wet mortar that should be what it's called but okay so the the premise of the of the of the build is exactly the same everything I've shown to you is how you build it uh, with those few points in there uh, what else so this is probably going to be the last video before Christmas uh, if I have time over the Christmas holidays between now and Christmas then I will put some more videos up I'll try and keep them up as the uh, the Friday the Friday uploads however because of this busy time of year and this weather and this and everything else I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to you until the new year so if you don't hear from me again then I will see you in the new year and if you're watching this video after Christmas what are you doing you need to get that bell on get that bell on and then be notified every time I upload a video I'll tell you what, these helicopters are doing my in as well. We've got helicopters as well as airplanes now. This is not cricket, this. Anyway, so we'll leave it there for uh, this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please do leave a like down below if you have. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I will see you guys in the new year. Unless you've been good boys and girls. And I'll try and get a video squeezed in between now and the new year. Right, okay. So with all that being said, take care. Have a fantastic Christmas, everyone. And I will see you in the next one. So take care. I'll see you then. ta -ra. <clears throat> Hi guys, how are you doing? No, let's start that again. Today we're going to be talking about a one and a half brick pier. And this um, technique, I was about to say technology then, this technology has been around for hundreds of years. In fact, how long has bricklaying been around for? I tell you, it must be thousands of years, even more than thousands of years. I'll tell you what, if anyone out there knows how long bricklaying has been around, let me know down in the comments. Right, anyway, let's start that again. Hi guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, no, it's before that plane goes overhead. I tell you, we're gonna have trouble with the planes today. Uh, it could be a couple of mils, sometimes I've ha ha, 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 ha. If this pier, it pier. <laughs> right, okay, sorry about that. If, um, no, f me, start again. So I'll build a couple up. In fact, oh, cool, I don't know really what I'm saying here. Let's start that again. Right, okay, so now we've got this, uh, this foot, no, uh, uh, uh. Press record, you bloody start flying over my house. I'm going to have a word with your governor. Maybe I should be a pilot rather than a bricklayer. Now I can piss off all the bricklayers in the world. I'm making videos for YouTube. Right, cool. I'll tell you what, that water don't half make those bricks look crap. 
I've got to change these bricks up, mate. In the next one. So take care. I'll see you then. Ta-ra. Fucking planes. I bet I wasn't even in the shop for the whole of that.